This is Supercar Street Racing and this is the 2018 Mercedes GLA 250. And we're going to review it. Take a look at the front of the GLA 250. Check out this stylish silver grill that Mercedes added. Down here, it has fog lights. This is almost like the grills on the SL65 AMG. The front has a pretty aggressive stance, as you can see here. Take a look at the side of the GLA 250 from Mercedes. This is the 2018 model. Here are the wheels and tires they chose for this car. On top, we have a nice silver trim that runs the length of the car. And here's how it looks like from the other angle. This is the back of the all new 2018 GLA 250 from Mercedes-Benz. Have a look at that rear diffuser and these aggressive square exhaust tips. And this nice rear spoiler. On the tailgate, they've got this nice chrome accent strip here at the bottom. And then another accent strip here below the car emblem and the Mercedes logo. This one looks especially good with the nice dark tint on the rear. This 2018 GLA 250 from Mercedes-Benz has their two liter, four cylinder turbocharged engine. This engine makes the GLA 250 seem really quick. It's rated at a zero to 60 time of 7.2 seconds, but I found driving it that it feels much quicker than 7.2 seconds. However, it does have a little bit of turbo lag. And especially when you have eco mode on and the car has to start up at every stoplight, it can be kind of noticeable. But overall, this vehicle makes some impressive performance numbers from its two liter turbocharged inline four cylinder. This GLA 250 is not the 4MATIC version, so it's only two wheel drive. And it does manage to break the tires free on occasion. It has that much torque. As a matter of fact, the engine feels much larger than it actually is. I found the power to be more than adequate for everyday driving. Moving to the inside of the GLA 250, on the door panels, we have the typical door controls. Here's the lock and unlock feature. Here's the seat controls, which on Mercedes looks like the actual seat. So it makes it much easier to figure out how to adjust the seats. Here's the bottom, here's the middle, here's the top. Here's the memory feature for the seats. And for the mirrors, it stores your personal preferences for any person who gets in the car and there's three available choices here. Here's the window controls and the mirror controls and the rear hatch opening control. Here's a good look at the seats on the GLA 250 from Mercedes-Benz. This leather reminds me a lot of the leather in BMWs. This particular vehicle has all black interior, which I think looks rather nice. 
The back seat of the GLA 250 is very roomy. You can see here there's plenty of room for three people to sit. And on this base model, there's not many controls back here. But right here, we do have a 12 volt outlet for your passengers in the back. Let's take a look at the inside of the GLA 250 from Mercedes-Benz. Taking a look at the actual instrumentation here, as you can see, we have a standard analog tachometer, an analog speedometer. Inside the speedometer, we have a standard fuel gauge. And inside the tachometer, we have a water temperature gauge. Right in the center of the dash, if we put the key in, you can see we have a nice LCD display which currently shows the miles on the vehicle and then it changes to the transmission selector and when we start the car it changes to the speedometer down here we have controls where we can toggle through a lot of the settings on the GLA that setting there is for your fuel range. Here's your eco display, a trip computer, and back to the speedometer. On the steering wheel, these are the controls for the center display. And here's your controls for your telephone and your audio system. On the side here, we've got controls for your windshield wipers. Here's your cruise control. And down here, we've got fog light controls, headlight controls, and your parking brake release. Over here to the right, here's the ignition switch. And this car has no button to start, just an ignition switch. Let's take a look at the infotainment display on this 2018 Mercedes GLA 250. One thing I don't like about this display is it looks like it's just tacked on. It really doesn't look like it was well thought out. It almost looks like somebody took an iPad or an Android pad and just literally tacked it to the dash. Starting here on this display, here's the vehicle settings. Here we can change the locator lighting, the interior lighting delay, the exterior lighting delay, the ambient light inside the vehicle, and our locator lighting. If we back up one, here's where we can change the dynamics on the car. Here we can adjust the drive dynamics, the climate control dynamics, Eco start and stop, which makes the car stop when you go to a stoplight or a stop sign. And the steering dynamics. I personally felt like sport mode was the best for all around driving. And if we back out again, and one more time, we have settings for the telephone, the media, the radio, and the navigation. Now the navigation on this vehicle is on an SD card which is right here. This vehicle does not have the SD card inserted, so when you select navigation, you'll see a slight pause, and then it's going to say there's no memory card inserted with the navigation software. If we back out again, we can take a look at the radio. So there's the radio. There's the volume control, and there's our selector. This vehicle does have Bluetooth streaming, so you can connect your device to here and stream Bluetooth audio. Here's your telephone controls. If we go down, we can change more options on the radio. If we back out,
pressing the star button on the control gives us this menu. It has icons for everything you can select. If we go down here, we can take a look at the Mercedes apps. I've enabled the Mercedes apps function. It wants me to subscribe for a trial period, but I'm not going to do that. If we hit the back out again, and the star button, we're back at the icon menu. So there's a look at the infotainment system on the 2018 GLA 250 by Mercedes-Benz. Here's the control panel, separate from the rotary control. Down here we have your heated seats, your eco mode, your hazards, and down here your climate control, which can be set to zoned or global. Let's take a look at the rear hatch in this GLA 250 by popping this. And the rear hatch just opened. Here in the back, we've got ample room for luggage. A couple of cargo nets here and here. Inside here, access to the lighting. Plenty of room for all your luggage in the back of this GLA 250. If we push this button, it closes itself. And it locks itself. Taking a ride in this GL 250 by Mercedes, the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to push down on this gear selector here to put the vehicle in gear. And you can see right here on the display, it did change to drive one. Now this car also has paddle shifters, which are pretty fun right here on the steering wheel. So as you can see right now, to go up into reverse, we have to press up on this. And here is the display. Here is the backup camera display. We're gonna go ahead and shut this down so that we can not have all the noise. Buckle our seatbelt here for safety. And we're gonna go for a ride in this all new 2018 GLA 250. Here's our backup display working nicely. And it's warning me to check my surroundings and not hit anything. Now to get this car into drive, we have to push down on the stick. The car did go into drive. And you can see right here, we do now have the speedometer there. We can change our display. To the eco display if we want to. There's our range. Now the first thing you're gonna notice here is that this vehicle is set to all sport. I actually prefer that setting better. Um, to me, the vehicle just rides and performs great um, in the sport mode. It does have quite a bit of torque right off the bottom. Right off the bottom end, you can feel the acceleration. It uh, feels really good. The one thing I will say about this car though is that it does have a moderate amount of turbo lag. Once that turbo spins up though, this does feel like a much bigger engine than just the two liter inline four cylinder engine. Checking out the brakes. Brakes feel very nice, they stop very well. 
We can move our display over here to vehicle. And if we wanted to, we could change the dynamics of the vehicle back into comfort mode from sport. Like I said, on sport setting, on the suspension, engine, it does ride very well. I don't see a need to put it on comfort at all. And the performance is so good on sport that I find it just awesome to leave it in that setting all the time. Now, I haven't done a very long road trip on it. I might change my mind once I get on the road and I'm riding for hours. But that's the acceleration. The car does have very nice mid-range acceleration. Very nice car to drive so far. Here we see the car is in eco mode, so it shut down when I put on the brakes. Accelerating from that start right there, we did spin the tires. It does have a great amount of low end torque, which causes that to happen. And remember, this vehicle is front wheel drive. This is not the 4Matic. Taking a look here at the stop sign. The car did shut off. It is in automatic mode. I'm going to turn that off. Car did start back up. Accelerating from the stop sign. Feel a little bit of turbo lag there. But it is worth it, in my opinion, for the amount of power that this GLA 250 has after that initial turbo lag. Got the speedometer up right here. I'm going to show you guys 0 to 60 now. See if we get a little wheel spin in the process. We are spinning the tires. There is 60 miles per hour. So I will say that right off the line, there is a quite a bit of a delay from the time you hit the accelerator pedal until you get that nice delivery of power. Next, we're gonna take a look at the mid-range acceleration of this GLA 250. So we are at 40 miles per hour now. We're gonna do a little 40 miles per hour to 70 miles per hour, as soon as we round this turn. Just accelerating here with a slight amount of throttle feels very nice. Uh, it does respond very nicely to the mid-range throttle input, but right here around this turn, we're going to go 40 to 70. Here we are at 40. And we're gonna put it to the floor there. There's a little bit of delay. There is 70 miles per hour. 80 and 93 braking from 93 very good there is a moderate amount of traffic here we are going to turn around now and I'm going to show you another acceleration run turning around Start from zero, a well, slight roll, and there's, you see the delay there, and then the wheel spin. There's 30, 40, 50, 60, 70. Cruising along at 38 miles per hour, this car feels very composed, very comfortable. I see no reason why you wouldn't want to take this car on any number of long road trips. And I just might do that this weekend. So as long as you keep this GLA 250 by Mercedes-Benz in the power band, it performs very well and there's very little turbo lag. However, if you let that turbo spin down, you will be waiting for it. Pulling back up in the driveway here. from a nice drive in this GLA 250. 
Final thoughts on this Mercedes GLA 250. This is the brand new model for Mercedes-Benz, the 2018 model. This is the non-formatic model, so this only has front wheel drive. As you saw from the video earlier, this car does break traction quite easily in the dry with the amount of low end torque that it has from this turbo inline four cylinder engine. My review of this car, I'm gonna give it a seven stars out of 10 rating. The reason it doesn't get higher, a couple of things. The turbocharged four cylinder engine has quite a bit of turbo lag. There's almost a three second delay from a dead stop if you hit the throttle full. If you let this vehicle get out of the turbo range, it is kind of laggy. So I give it that rating. Thanks for watching everybody. We'll see you next time with more reviews.